What's everyone? My name is Pi. And I'm Joe. And welcome to episode two of Gear Talk here on SR Lounge. Now normally at the start of each episode I'd ask, what are you drinking, Joe? But, but since we just recorded our video, still cherry coke and you're still drinking... Hot water. Lukewarm water now. Warm water. Not very good. <laughs> but still a cold remedy. All right, so today we're really talking about the Sigma 50mm Art. This is our official review of this awesome lens that just came out. And first, well, I wanted to do this review with Joe Cha here so I could kind of bash his review of what he was talking about. I wanted to give him a chance to actually just explain to himself what he meant about his review. Cause he kind of did the unofficial review on SR Lounge and a lot of you didn't agree with what he said, but it actually has some merit. Now, let's just first talk about the lens itself. Before we talk about our overall experience with it and let's talk about like all the other stuff, let's talk about from the top mm -hmm. performance wise. How did you feel like it performed? I think it performed great. When okay. I, you know, when I was shooting out in the field and saw the pictures on the back of my Canon 5D Mark III, I was kind of like, oh, okay, this looks good. But then when I pulled it into Lightroom, that's when you kind of see, like, wow, like this lens is really sharp. The colors look really good and there's not that much chromatic aberrations. Like I was shooting wide open on the beach and you said that it looked like Brenzner effect because yeah. the depth of field was so shallow. Yeah, it does. It actually, like, because it's so sharp in its area of focus, it does have kind of that Brenizer look with the, uh, the the bokeh in the background. But it is incredibly sharp. It is. Um, the bokeh was absolutely wonderful. It At 1.4, I actually did a side-by-side -side comparison just kind of shooting leaves, and they're very much kind of indistinguishable, at least yeah. as far as the bokeh goes. You can tell differences between sharpness and color and so forth, but as far as the bokeh, it looked amazing. Overall, really for performance, I would definitely give it five out of five stars. Would you agree with that? I would. Okay. It's an awesome lens when it comes to what it gives you. Uh, it gives you a very high contrast look overall, um, and it gives you a little bit different colors than you'd get like out of, say, the 51.2, which I found the 1.2 actually gave me a little bit more, uh, you could say, kind of more neutral tones. This is more high contrast. Yeah. No, I absolutely bit. would. When I pull these pictures in the Lightroom, they almost look finished. Yeah. Whereas the 1.2, you kind of look like, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I, I want to add a little bit more saturation or a little more contrast, yeah. vibrance, just a little bit, but it makes a difference. I agree. And I've taken this out now on several different shoots. I've shot, uh, I think, two weddings with it now. Mm -hmm. I've shot several different portrait sessions. I've taken my kids out and shot them. I've done side-by-side -side comparisons everything. It's a great lens. So performance-wise, I have no qualms giving it five out of five stars. Yeah. How about overall features-wise? What would you say? I mean, features really on the 50 millimeter, it doesn't have image stabilization. Um, we have a simple autofocus, manual focus kind of button here. I actually think one feature that it does have that is important is the minimum focusing distance. It is a oh, bit closer right. than the 51.2 on the Canon. And that, you know, it opens up new composition effects where you can get closer, you can compose differently. Sure. I also actually, I, I know this is kind of, maybe this is more of a design side, but I do like the way that the hood snaps into place. Yeah. Um, it's very secure and everything. Uh, but from a feature standpoint, it's a pretty basic lens, really well designed though, uh, has great tactile feel to it, which yeah. brings us kind of more to the design side. On the features on a 50 mil, you know, this is very simple too, like a standard 50 millimeter. So I don't know if there's too much there to like give it a good or a bad rating. I wouldn't I wouldn't knock anything down. I wouldn't give it anything like yeah, crazy or anything. Yeah, it performs like, like a 50 millimeter shit. Exactly. Um, but from a design side, I love the feel of this. Yeah. I mean, it has kind of this matte finish on it. It's it's very solid and weighted. I mean, yeah. it's heavy to the, the feel of it. And it's actually quite large for a 50 millimeter, right? Yeah. It's kind of like when you go to a gun range and you pick up a gun and you're like, this is kind of heavy and it feels, you know, like strong and powerful. It's kind of like, you yeah. know, the gun range a lot. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that might not be something very relatable to <laughs> two different kinds of shooting I do. <laughs> All right, so yeah, it has a lot of weight to it. And it's it's surprising when I every time it's in my bag, I always mistake it for the 2470 because of its size and shape mm -hmm. and everything like that. But there are some people that are kind of concerned with the weight of it, and I would say to those people that it really doesn't differ that much from the 1.2L. Um, you know, it, this is a pretty heavy lens too. It's a little more kind of nubby and stocky, like kind of wide. This one's a little bit more tall and everything, but both of them are both pretty solid lenses. I yeah. do like the build quality of this lens. I think that though. that is why it is so heavy because the elements in glass, you know, glass only weighs so much, but because there's, I think there's a lot more metal. It feels like there's a lot more metal in this lens Yeah. than the 50, uh, 1.2. And that's, that's what adds to the weight. But with that weight comes quality. Well, and it's interesting too, if you, if you take a look at this, so you look, because this lens is so much taller, and by the way, I've let this lens get really dusty. So don't kill me. Um, <clears throat> because this lens is kind of more stocky, to get to a 1.2 aperture, it requires much less glass. Look at this one though. 
Look at how much more glass you need on the Sigma Art to get to 1.4 just because of its size and shape and dimension and everything. So what that extra weight is, is all that glass in there. Yeah, I think this is a 72 millimeter thread or a 77 and this is a 72. So it is, yeah. uh, does have a bigger filter thread. So if you do use prime lenses and you have a bunch of 72s and you're thinking about getting this lens, it's another thing to consider. Okay. so. From a design standpoint, we love it. I would give it five out of five stars from the design standpoint. Sure. Um, let's, what's, what's next? We have quality, right? Yeah. So again, from a quality standpoint, not only from the build quality of this unit over to image quality, again, I would give it five out of five stars. Do you have anything that you can possibly think of quality-wise? Quality, um, there is something, and I'm not sure whether it has to do with the optics or, or uh, you know, the way the elements move, but when uh, for the video side i did use this wedding or i did use this lens at a wedding for video and mm -hmm. you know one of the great things about this was um the quality obviously of the video but then one of the things i noticed immediately was when i racked focus there was an immense amount of breathing oh, okay that, the focus breathing that this lens has so that everybody knows focus breathing is essentially the change of composition as you're changing in focus. So one thing that cinematic lenses don't do is they don't breathe when you focus. Yeah. So that way when you rack focus, the composition, you don't see any more or any less at the edges of the frame as you move in and out. Yeah. And so, yeah, so when you're rack focusing through something and you see that breathing, you kind of, it becomes very distracting. Yeah. You're not really focusing on, you know, what you should be focusing on. You're now seeing kind of the, like the composition changing. So from a cinema standpoint, it might not be the, the ideal lens. Yeah, and because uh, it does have a shorter MFD, the focus throw is actually much smaller on this lens. And so when you rack focus, like moving it a couple millimeters will go much farther. Where on the 51.2, when you move it a couple millimeters, you have a little more distance. More play. Yeah. Okay. All right. So again, though, uh, from a quality standpoint, do you think that it would change anything like would you give it any less stars or uh you know it depends on it really depends on your use if you're using it for photos i would say five out of five stars by mm -hmm. far because it is great when you're taking stills but for video there are certain things that you want to avoid this lens and so you know the quality and color is there but the rack focus you know the focus breathing and the you know the the focus ring issue I would probably give it a three out of five stars. It's still a great okay. lens for video, but and it does have And that might be like issues. on the video performance side more so than the yeah. quality side. No, you're right. Okay. So so maybe on the video performance side, not the, the ideal lens for that. From the mm -hmm. still side, though, I'd have to say it's, it's been pretty awesome. Let's talk about now, though, the final, which is the value. And this is kind of the crazy part about this lens because you're getting a lens that competes with $1,500, $2,000 lenses, and this is less than 1000 right? I this think it's just, I think it's 999 999 That's the price. So, for what you're getting, it is an incredible value. Yeah. And on that stand, I would give it five out of five stars. I mean, there is, there's not another lens that I could compare to this at that price range. Would you agree? I would agree. So yeah. we kind of both agree that from, I mean, definitely from a still standpoint, I, across the board, it gets five out of five stars. From a video standpoint, maybe it's like 4.5, 4.7 out of, of five stars. It's a fantastic lens. Yeah. Now this gets back to your article where you basically said this is the best lens I would never buy. Yeah. And that was because of the other factors, kind of the more artistic factors in your yeah. decision. So let's talk about those. So you're talking about the images that you're getting out of this have that art kind of look to them. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what Sigma did, but you know, the pictures that you get out, when you import them into Lightroom, they look finished, they look great. They have all the sharpness that you would want in a lens or in an image, they have all the contrast, saturation. But what I found was when I was putting that back into Lightroom, I found that I didn't want to do anything to the images. I didn't really want to post-produce them into my style. I kind of just wanted to leave them. And the frightening thing was because of that, the lens was now pushing my photography into the direction that is not really where my style was. I, I can kind of see what you mean. Like, do you, are, are you kind of worried that, well, if everybody owns a Sigma 50 art, then mm -hmm. my stuff is going to be looking like everybody else's stuff because it kind of adds on another signature look to it. Yeah. No, I think, you know, it kind of comes back to a photographer's vision. You yeah. know, your photos should, your vision should determine your photos, not the lens. Yeah. But if this lens already fits into your vision, then you are set. Well, and so here's what I noticed from the kind of aesthetic differences between the 51.2 and the Sigma art. Um, well, from a artistic standpoint, I noticed that the 51.2 images were a little bit less 
contrasty. They're a little mm -hmm. more flat, more neutral toned. Yeah. Um, sharpness was very comparable. Uh, I, I found that generally the Sigma Art sharpness did was a little bit better in most situations, but then I saw in certain areas of the frame, the 1.2 was actually a little bit sharper. So I'm gonna say that they're pretty comparable, but overall, I still think the Sigma's a little bit sharper. But that really didn't define anything. Neither did the change. The look in the bokeh didn't look that much different either to, mm -hmm. to warrant anything. The biggest difference was really in the color and also in the vignetting. So in the contrast and color, there was a significant change there. In the vignetting, there was a significant change. We had a, a large amount of vignetting on the uh, Sigma, and that's mainly due to also, this is a, a very new lens, and obviously the camera, the 5D Mark III, doesn't have a profile built in for this. So while the 50mm 1.2 probably has an in-camera profile correction being done, this one does not. Also, when you get this in a Lightroom, it's just such a new lens that it's not gonna have profile corrections available to you when you get in a Lightroom. Yeah. So you're gonna see that, that vignetting, and it was so noticeable, but the exact same exposure, the exact same settings across two different images uh, of my daughter, it actually looks like this is about a, a quarter to a half stop underexposed compared wow. to this one. So it looked like it was actually letting in a little bit less light mm -hmm. um, just towards the center of the frame. And, and towards the yeah. edge, it was much, much darker. So no, was, I, I got that too when I was in my test. But then it didn't occur to me that that was the lens. I, I just thought it was maybe a user error because it didn't show up in all the pictures, just a couple. It was pretty, I mean, it was more noticeable in some than others. Yeah. But for these scenes that I, I did do it, it was it was very noticeable that it was a little bit under uh, the same exact settings on the 51.2. Okay. That being said, though, I thought from a photographic standpoint, the aesthetic looked great. And I think that it still is... I mean, you can still manipulate it to get to whatever additional look you want to, but that's the thing, is that you're not getting necessarily flat, less contrasty images out of this. The images are gonna be more contrasty, more saturated. So if you want it to look more flat, you need to remove contrast, remove saturation yeah. when you take this into post to get back to, say, like that light and airy kind of look that you might wanna have, whatever it is. But I thought that wasn't really a, necessarily a hindrance on my side, it was more, it's kind of a really interesting feature of the lens. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, one thing that I noticed was that I, I don't think I've ever experienced a lens that dramatically changing the look of an image between two similar variants, like between the 50 millimeter at 1.4 and the 50 millimeter 1.4, the Sigma versus the Canon. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I've used a lot of 50s, and this is the first lens that looked really stylized. Yeah. Yeah, I guess hence the name Art. Yeah, but I would say kudos go to Sigma for this lens. Now, final verdict, here's what I would do. If I was purchasing a 50 millimeter for the very first time, if I didn't already own the Canon 1.2L, I'd probably get the Sigma. Just because for the price, you're not gonna get that kind of performance for that kind of money, okay? So for the price, it really is the best bet. Unless you really just need that extra point, you know, two half stop mm -hmm. of low light performance yeah. that you would get on this lens. But the thing is that at 1.2, this lens is a little bit on the soft side. You know, at 1.4, this a is bit, pretty yeah. dang sharp. And it focuses really well too. That's one thing I forgot to mention, by the way. As far as the performance side, the focusing was pretty rock solid. I yeah, thought. no, you're absolutely right. And I agree with you. If this was my first purchase, if I've never bought a 50 millimeter lens before, and this was, and I had a thousand dollars to spend, I would have probably bought the 50, the, the Sigma 50 Art. Okay, so that being said, now that I already have my Canon 51.2 L, would I sell this to get the Sigma? And I'd say no. Okay, I don't know what you would say. Uh, I would say no, because I don't have Canon cameras anymore. Although okay. they do make a Sigma 54, the Sonys, I mm. don't think I would. Yeah, and the reason why is that I wouldn't necessarily get a big difference um, in these, in kind of the difference in looks by selling this lens to go to this one. I mean, it's, it's just not, yes, this is a little bit sharper. Yes, I get a little more contrast, a little more color and, and whatnot. And it's a great lens. But to me, that doesn't merit necessarily selling this lens just to get it. But... If this lens was giving you the style of photography that you were already shooting, would yeah, you? Definitely. I probably would actually. If if that high contrast, high color, kind of stylized vignetting look was closer to my final image, mm -hmm. by, by all means, sell this one, get that one, because it takes you one step closer without having to do any post-production, right? Exactly. On the flip side though, I do also shoot Nikon, and I'd have to say that um, from the Nikon standpoint, if I were shooting on the 1.4 Nikkor lens, is that Nikkor, Nikkor? Nikkor, Nikkor. Whether. I probably would sell that to get this lens. I probably would use this lens over that one. Just mm. because that's a 1.4 lens also, it really doesn't give me any benefit as far as low light capabilities. And this has such a great look to it. I, okay. I absolutely dig that's that. Interesting. So, hopefully that makes sense to y'all. Yep. 
Do you have anything else to say about this to redeem yourself? No, I mean, I love the lens. I, I have not that many complaints about it. There are just those two cinema complaints, the, you know, the focus breathing and the, uh, the throw on the focus ring, but it's a great lens. It is a fantastic lens, guys. So for more information, be sure to check out the article itself on srlounge.com. You can get there by clicking on the description below the video. Also, if you enjoy these videos, be sure to subscribe. Let us know what you guys like to hear us talk about next, and we'll see you all in the next video. See ya.